morning everyone. I just went out to check on the chickens. They're doing fine. Their water's unfrozen. They're staying nice and warm, though they're not coming out of their coop at all. And it seems like Dandelion, one of our six-year-old hens, has decided to go broody again. But as far as I can tell, she's only sitting on a golf ball. <laughs> um, the noise in the background is our generator. We power that up every 12 hours or so just to keep our, our food in the fridge and freezer cold. But other than that, we are day two without power, and it's been fun. Hey everyone, welcome to my winter wonderland. It is Monday afternoon now and we've been playing out in the snow most of the day. The power's not on just yet, but we're hoping it'll come back on soon. It doesn't bother us a whole lot um, because of the way our house is made. We have heat because of the wood stove. We can easily get water from the snow if we don't have enough inside. Our well pump won't work without electricity, but unless it gets really, really cold, the pipes are fine. If they get below freezing for too long, the pipes will freeze, so that's why we want the electricity back on. But it's been nice. It's been very peaceful out here, other than the, the rooster. <laughs> but I wanted to show you what I've been working on. <clears throat> I finished my first of the Bridget's Garden Socks by Remembrances Pottery, and I love it. It's super sparkly. And I am just about to do the heel on the second one. I wasn't sure that I would have enough of the sparkly white, so I did a different colored white toe. And I may do the same, um, I may use this yarn for the heel. But I put in two rows for the heel, and then I've picked up the stitches. So this is called, well, a forethought, I guess, if you know where you're gonna put it. Afterthought, if you cut in to the pattern that you already have there. <clears throat> so I think what I'll do actually is I'll head out to the studio and maybe set up a little table so I show you guys how I do the short row heel on the short rows on the sides to increase the depth of the heel. So we'll go do that in a sec. In the meantime, hopefully you are enjoying your beginning to winter. It's not even here yet actually, it's still the end of fall. <laughs> so we'll see what kind of winter weather we get for the rest of the real winter. And we always get snow in the winter, even if it's just a couple of inches here and there. But I think, I think living in the south, people forget that, or they don't even realize that we are south uh, latitude-wise, but we are high up in the mountains. This area of the Appalachian Mountains has the highest of the Appalachian Mountains and uh, on the eastern seaboard. So I'm only living at about 3,000 feet, but I think it goes up to 6,500 feet in this area. I'll have to look it up. I can't remember the exact amount. But it's the high, we have the highest mountain on the eastern seaboard, not too far from here. So when the weather comes in, just because of the altitude, we, we tend to get more snow. Okay, so I have inserted my needles into uh, the stitches for the afterthought or forethought heel. I've picked those up and now I'm going to get rid of this yarn in between, this waist yarn. So I'm just going to go in there and snip one of them. This purple one looks like it wants to be snipped. You have to be careful not to snip the yarn. That's a part of your pattern. And then I'm going to take my needle and just start pulling that out. It takes a little while to get the whole thing taken out, but you basically take out this whole waste yarn and then you have left on your needles just the stitches that you want to work. to knit across the first row.
Okay. As I get to, actually, as I get to this last stitch, what I'm going to do is pick up a little something from in between to close up this gap, and then I knit the two together. And then I'm going to go to the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick up another stitch. And I'm going to knit just nine stitches on this side. It's not as easy to see what the stitches are because you've got a lot of your carried yarn from the color work. But when I have a stitch like this that seems like a large loop, I'm going to knit into the back of it just to close that up a little bit. Okay, now after nine stitches, I'm going to turn my work and do what's called a double stitch. Sorry, I have a crazy setup here trying to get this filmed for you, so there's a lot of things in the way. So this was this, the stitch I just knit. I've turned my work and now I'm going to take that stitch put it onto my right hand needle. The yarn was in the front. I'm bringing it over and pulling it tight. Now I'm going to bring it back around and I'm going to purl back to nine stitches over on the other side. my ninth stitch. So now I'm going to turn my work, bring the yarn in front, slip that ninth stitch, take the yarn, bring it over, pulling that ninth stitch tight. And then I'm going to knit back to the other side to seven stitches. Okay. Turn my work, yarns in front, slip that seventh stitch, bring that yarn over, pull it snug, bring it back in front again, and purl back to seven stitches on the other side. stitch. Now I turn my work again, bring the yarn in front, slip that seventh stitch, bring the yarn over the right hand needle, pull it tight, nice and snug, and then knit back to five stitches on the other needle. Okay, five stitches. Now I'm going to turn my work, keeping the yarn in front, slip that fifth stitch, bring the yarn over the right hand needle, pull that stitch tight, and purl back to the fifth stitch on the other needle. Okay. Now I have five stitches. Turn my work, bring the yarn in front, slip the fifth stitch, pull it over the needle, snug. Now I'm going to knit these four more stitches and all the stitches on this next needle to start this second side. And what I will have, so you see what I've done, is created this uh, short row extension on each side of the heel so that you have a little more room, a little more depth to your heel. So let me take you to the other side and then you'll do the exact same thing over there. And you just knit through those double stitches when you get to them. So here's one right here. You can see how it looks a little bit different. 
go under and knit through both those little feet. Sometimes you can go in from this side and give it a tug so you can see where that stitch is. And go ahead and knit through those feet. Okay, so I've completed my short row shaping on this side of the heel. I've knit across this needle and nine stitches on this one. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing I did over here. I'm going to slip, double stitch, slip this last stitch, then go back and around nine stitches, then turn, go back and around seven, back and around seven, round five, and then to five stitches over. And then that will be my last double stitch. And then I will come back around the whole heel, picking up any of the double stitches and continue decreasing from there. And then each side will have the short row shaping to increase the depth of the heel. Okay, I've come to my last stitch. That's my last double stitch. And now I'm just going to start knitting all around the whole heel, picking up all the double stitches and beginning my decreasing for the heel. And you can see the white patch here and the white patch here is where I've knit some extra stitches to make the heel deeper. And that is a way to increase the depth on an afterthought or forethought heel. Good morning everyone, it's Thursday morning and I thought I'd brave the elements for you guys so I can get outside in the snow. I won't take my pajamas off for you guys but I'll brave the snow. <laughs> Toby took Leaf out this morning to school, they slitted down our mountain and so there was no reason for me to get out of my pajamas so I know you'll understand. We got lots and lots of snow as you've seen. Uh, it's it's a little unusual to get this much snow. We usually get snow every year, but not more than, you know, five or six inches at a time, if that. 19 inches is the most we've ever had since we've lived out here. Um, but it's beautiful, and it'll probably be gone in the next couple of days because we're supposed to get rain tomorrow. Though our driveway, since it's on the north side of a mountain, it doesn't, doesn't clear up very easily. But we know that and we just prepare to be sledding a bunch during the winter if we get snow. Thank you all so much for participating in the winter giveaway. I really enjoyed reading the thread and seeing the first music that you had ever purchased. It actually brought back a lot of memories of other things that I had purchased or listened to when I was young like Duran Duran and The Police and Michael Jackson's Thriller. I remember, I think I saw the video for that song before I ever heard the song 
and it scared me because of that zombie thing. <laughs> I don't remember how old I was, but I could not listen to the beginning of it. I can't remember who it was that, that voiced the beginning of the Thriller song, and it was, it was like a horror movie, so I would have to fast forward through it every time I listened to it, because I liked the song, but I couldn't stand listening to the, the, oh, what was his name? He was known for his deep voice, and anyway, and then there was also the Monkees, that was one of the first concerts that I ever went to see, it was their 20th, their 20th anniversary concert, I went to go see them, and I was sitting way up in the nosebleed section, so I brought binoculars and took pictures through the binoculars so I could see them better, so that was a lot of fun. The three winners were Eyes and Hands, Marionette Knits, and Panushka, and they have all been contacted. If you haven't gotten back to me yet, I think I'm just waiting to hear from Marionette Knits, then I can send out the two patterns. Thank you so much to Crafternoon Te Treats and to Victoria for your beautiful patterns. And thank you so much to Maria at Dillfield for the, the box. Anyway, I, I wanted to show you a little bit of what I've been finishing up. You saw the tutorial on the um, heel that I put in. And here are the two finished socks, my little fraternal twins. I love them. I think they turned out absolutely beautifully. And here it is. It's a really, really beautiful design. And Natalie did a fabulous job. It is Bridget's Garden Socks. And the red that I used is, I think, 95% merino and 5% of the sparkle. I got that from Echo View Fiber Mill. And they still have some, but it's not up on their website. It's actually in their sale bin. So if you call them, they may be able to get some out for you. And the white I just had in stash, but without a label on it. So I can't tell you what it is, but I think it's a standard superwash white fingering weight with sparkle. So I love them. I think they're beautiful, and I can't wait to wear them. That's going to be my winter solstice, um, winter solstice socks for me. The other thing I've been working on is the cloak. I have finished the main part and have started on the color work. And here it is. It took me a while to figure out exactly the pattern that I wanted in the color work. I went back and forth with a bunch, but I think I landed on one that I like. So. I'm just waiting on a little more yarn to continue it because I have, I've run out. So hopefully in the next couple of days that will be here and I can keep going on this because it's really starting to go quickly now, which of course is just the way it's going to be, right? When you say, that's it, I'm going to slow down, I'm not going to go, not going to push myself. It just kind of started flying off my needles. So I'm working on that. And that's it. I have one finished object and I have this work in progress. Um, I will be casting on a sweater soon for Kaya. She has asked for another one, which is a big deal because you guys know that Kaya doesn't wear a lot of uh, wool or knitwear stuff. But she wanted a specific type of sweater. And uh, at the same time, I was asked by We Are Knitters, the company We Are Knitters, if I would sample one of their kits. So I let Kaya loose on their website to see what she might like and she fell in love with a sweater called the Cartagena sweater. It is right here. And she is doing it. She wants me to knit it in these two beautiful colors. It's kind of a, a creamy white and a terracotta. In fact, that's the name of it, terracotta and natural. And um, so I'll tell you in a second why I'm, why, why I'm smelling it. So yes, We Are Knitters sent me this and I told them I would knit Kaya a sweater out of it because Kaya really wanted a lightweight sweater and loved the look of it. So um, I've been curious about them for a long time. I started following them on, on, started following them on Instagram a while ago, but they mostly at the time were into bulky yarn. And that's still, I think, kind of their main their main thing, big bulky yarns, because it's quick. Uh, they often have patterns that are really easy for beginning knitters. And so, but I just don't knit with bulky a whole lot, but I enjoy seeing what they come up with. But now they have some smaller yarns, like this is, let's see, it's 232 yards in 100 grams. So that's a worsted-ish, right? Maybe DK? 
um, so they are, they, they are selling smaller yarns now, but one thing that I was really impressed by is their commitment to the environment. Everything is packaged in paper, um, and they source all their fibers ethically and sustainably. So I know a lot of the, I think all of the cotton and the wool comes from the Peruvian highlands. But um, this kit, well first when I got it, I think they get extra points because it smelled like Nag Champa. If you guys are incense people, you know what that is. It's one of my favorite incenses. Incense. Um, it's called Nag Champa, and I opened it and I just got a light whiff of it. I was like, oh, that smells so nice. So, yep, it all came in this bag, and it, the kit comes with the yarn, and this is their cotton yarn, and it's super soft. It comes with its own knitting needles, and I haven't knit with straight needles in years, but I'm gonna give it a try. So yeah, I'm gonna give these a try. I'm gonna try and do the whole thing as it comes in the kit. And then you have this little envelope, which has stickers, your embroidery or your finishing needle, as well as the pattern. And check this out. Tiny little thing that has everything you need in it. It's a seamed pattern. It's been a while since I've done one of those. But, um, but yeah, it's all on one little piece of paper and you can read it just fine. It's just that it's not so extremely complicated that they need a lot of paper. Here's some of the stickers. And then there's even a little something to sew in the back of your garment. So yeah, I'll get started on that soon. I know Kaya is excited about it. It's cotton, so she probably won't wear it in the winter anyway, but who knows, she might. <laughs> and it'll be fun to work on over the winter, especially when she's out of school, maybe work on it with her a little bit. She does do some knitting, not a whole lot. Toby has picked up knitting again. Every year around this time, he thinks, maybe I should knit myself a hat, and so far he hasn't knit himself a hat that fit. <laughs> He's a very tight knitter, so he'll get gauge, by doing a small swatch and then when he gets them on circular needles he pulls too tight. So I taught him how to knit continental and how to hold his hand or hold the yarn in his left hand to get um, a more loose gauge and he's been working on a really pretty hat with cables and this is his first cabled hat and it's coming out well. He's almost done and so far it fits. So I will hopefully get him on here next time so you guys can see a little bit about that hat. I think that's it. It's just a little quick check in with you guys and I hope you're all doing amazingly well and having good weather where you are and enjoying your holiday season so far. I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Bye.